One of my favorite studies in which we've looked at this was involved bringing participants into the lab and inducing stress using the most powerful technique that we have at our disposal that our Human Subjects Ethics Review Committee will allow us to use on college students. Anyone want to take a guess at what that is? Shout it out. Public speaking, doing what I'm doing right now. So participants come into the lab and we induce stress by telling them the following. Today, today we want you to give a speech on why you're ideally qualified to land your dream job. We want you to talk about your strengths and weaknesses and importantly provide real world examples that illustrate how you've overcome these weaknesses in ways that perfectly position you for this, for this job. We give people five minutes to do this in a, in a very warm, tight cubicle. They don't have a pad or pencil, there's no computer. It's a really strong way of inducing feelings of anxiety. <laughs> and we do it, mind you, in the name of science and helping people. That's the long-term goal. Um, we're not just uh, maniacal. So everyone stresses out. What we then do is we randomly assign people to one of two groups. So essentially, by the flip of a coin, you get one or two sets of instructions. If you're in the first person group, we tell people, you know, one of the things we're interested in in this study are the different ways that people report preparing themselves psychologically right before they give public speeches. Some people report trying to work through and make sense of their feelings using first person pronouns. So that's what we'd like you to do. Ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? Right, so we're trying to get people in this meaning making mode, but they're in the first person. If you are assigned to the non first person group, you get the exact same story. We're interested in how people prepare themselves psychologically, dot, dot, dot. But we then tell people that some people report using their own name and other non-first person pronouns as they prepare themselves. So that's what we'd like you to do. And so if I'm the uh, subject, the instruction to me would be, ask yourself, why is Ethan feeling this way? So in one case, it's why am I? In the other case, it's why is Ethan? What we then do is we have an experimenter come into the, the cubicle that the participant is in and we take them down the hall to another room. And when they get to the other room, there's an X on the floor and they're told to stand on the X right here. And then they look up and see that in front of them are three Confederates who are trained to have slightly disapproving facial expressions. So if you wanna get a sense of what that looks like, you could scan the room for the rest of the talk. Um, just kidding. Um, but we're trying to create this environment of hostility. And then it's go time. People actually give their speeches. When we're done with the study, we take the videotapes of participants' performance, and we have judges who are blind to the condition that particip participants are in. We have them rate these videos on how confident, nervous, and overall persuasive participants were. And what we find is that participants who are in the non-first person group are rated by, a, by judges as giving more persuasive speeches. 